What's going on guys? Welcome back to Just Right Outdoors. Sorry it's been a couple weeks since I put out a video. Bear season opened up in Washington um, August 1st and uh, been recording videos along the way. Um, haven't gotten a bear down. Uh, I seen a bear, um, gave her a pass. She was she was small um, <clears throat> and it was out here on those logging properties we hunt as much as I'd like to help them. Um, you know, I'm not a, a trophy trophy hunter by any means. Um, I'm a meat eater. <laughs> but uh, uh, she was small. She was really small. Um, beautiful color face, chocolate. Um, you know, next couple of years she'll be a nice looking bear. Um, but I also haven't recorded a video because, uh, you know, you, you guys ever have everything going right and you got the plan, everything is great. And then truck breaks down and work gets crazy and uh and it's been a hectic couple weeks uh actually i had to tear apart the motor in my truck um thanks to my uncle and his years of knowledge if he had a beard we'd call him the beard of knowledge um we got it running um so that's good uh, <laughs> dang fords <laughs> but uh yeah other than that everything's good i hope everything's good with you guys i hope you're getting ready for the season um deer season's coming up in uh washington in a couple uh about a week and a half eight days i think um and followed up by elk season and uh so those are going to be some fun hunts i'll get content out as much as i can i uh, just want to stop by and say hey um but also um been shooting this bow for a couple months now about four months five months um elite ritual 30. um <clears throat> first and foremost elite is not paying me to make this um I am a brand ambassador with them, or a pro staff, however you want to call it. Um, just try to get my foot in the door, um, and they're a great company, a uh, fantastic group of people. Um, through them, I've also joined um, Stick and Dreams TV, and uh, they're hooked up with Elite, so it kind of just made sense to hook up with them. And they're also a part of uh, Whitetail Grounds. Um, unfortunately, I don't hunt Whitetail. I only hunt Blacktail. Um, someday I might. Who knows? But uh, I wanted to talk about this bow for a second. Um, I just shot it. Um, I got it in the OD green. I mean, I'm an army vet, elite, nicely done. Great finish, uh, smooth, no, I mean, it's a, it's a great looking bow. Um, black limbs, I just, I love the look of it. <clears throat> um, kind of like with Matthews and Hoyt um, and Prime, I believe. I know Matthews and Hoyt for sure, and elite. They partnered up with QAD. Um, never use those rests, so I am not going to say anything about them. But what I am using is a ripcord. It's called the Ripcord Max. I went with this because instead of springs and plastic pieces in internally, it uses a ball bearing system. So it's, in my opinion, it's almost fail proof. Um, it's fully enclosed, ball bearing, it's pressed in there, um, it's smooth, it's quiet. Um, I mean, that's me doing it. I could shoot another arrow if you want, but I mean, it works flat out amazingly. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, so that's why I went with that. Not because QAD sucks or ripcord's better. Um, you know, I, I'm sure if I put a QAD on this bow, it would be perfect. The one thing that the QAD has over this ripcord, it being partnered up with QAD, um, their rests are kind of machined to fit the riser of the Elite Bow, much like the Hoyt or the Matthews. Um, they're, they're, they're machined to fit the bow. So tuning it, the tunability on that rest is awesome because it's, it marries up to the riser perfect. Everything works great. The one thing with the ripcord, and I'm not sure with the QAD, is the containment bar right there. Hits the cable roller, right? I mean, this, this riser is flat. I don't know. It's hard to show. The riser's flat right here, so that ripcord can slide up tight against it if it had to. We had to put a gap on there, right? And uh, <clears throat> because the containment bar was hitting the roller guard. So um, shout out to Jason at Riverside Archery. Um, they don't really do anything with Elite uh, from what I was told they used to, um, but they took on the project, no questions asked. Um, and got and got it freaking perfect. I mean, I didn't even have to tune it. It was perfect. 
Um, so that's why I went with ripcord. Just the ball bearing, Washington State, it rains. You could be out there hunting, it'd be rainy, next minute snowy, sleet, freezing rain. So I went with the internal ball bearing system. And uh, uh, the one thing I'm kind of worried about is this cable. You get that snagged and cut or whatever, you know, um, you're not doing so good. Um, so I've been thinking about actually going with the ripcord lock, which is a uh, limb driven, uh, just like this, but it's limb driven, uh, mainly because I can repair it in the field if I had an issue. The one cool thing about this ripcord rest too is over time these will stretch and you just un undo that little set screw right there and you can pull that tighter so your, your rest will stay in time. And I believe QAD did something like that, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I looked at both rests and in my opinion, the rip cord was just better. Um, this is a 30 inch axle to axle, it's compact bow. That's why I went with that because I mean, I can pan you around, but it's brushy. So something small and compact um, <clears throat> was uh, right up my alley. Um, the back wall is solid. I mean, you draw that sucker back, it's staying back. It's it's great. You can adjust it from 75% to 90% let off. Um, I know some states have let off regulations, uh, so you can adjust it. Um, you got these little pads up on the limbs to catch the limb stop. And um, um, got them on top and bottom. And I like this better because I shot a... Um, my first bow ever was a diamond in, uh, diamond edge SB1. And uh, it had cable stops. And you know, you'd be full draw and you could give her a little more, you know, it was real spongy. Um, the other bow I had was a diamond deploy and uh, it had um, a limb stop on it. And I really liked it cause it was just solid. You drew it back and you were locked in there. Um, if, uh, if you really don't have the money for a flagship bow, check out Diamond. Um, I use their bows for twice twice now. Um, I used my uh, edge to harvest my animals last year, and it did the job. You know, for three hundred dollar bow. You know, I found it on eBay for three hundred bucks, brand new. And uh, that's what my wife shoots. Uh, she shoots the Infinite Edge. Um, once she gets better <laughs> over time, sorry, honey, um, we'll go ahead and get her a fancy bow. But, uh, yeah, so because I'm partnered up with elite brand ambassador, pro staff, whatever you want to call it, I know people call it different things and hate it, whatever, uh, get over it. Um, I wanted to give their bows a shot. I felt that, um, being with them and, um, uh, advertising for them basically, and being a part of their family, I wanted to be able to shoot their bow, harvest animals with their bow, and I mean, what better place to test it out than in the Pacific Northwest? Um, I don't tree stand hunt, I don't blind hunt, I spot and stalk. So I felt like this was a, a perfect opportunity to help them out because they approached me and came to me, and uh, it's been great so far, and I'm excited for the rest of this journey. Um, I also, so they're kind of a, one company entity so they're hooked up with cbe custom bow equipment um uh, scott archery um who else slick trick broadheads solid broadheads i believe dual game calls uh which is great because i use dual game calls um I, I have a really hard time using mouth calls but uh so i part i married this thing up with the cbe cbe engage hybrid it is what i got is a three pin mover and I got it in the micro. So it's got, I don't know, you're gonna have to really zoom in on that sucker. It's got 0 0.10 pins. And uh, you unlock this little tab here and you can dial her out, dial her out all the way to 100 um, with your bottom pin being your rover. So, um, you know what? This site was super easy to set up. Um, just follow the directions. Um, and I've checked it. I've actually shot past 100 yards just guesstimating, but it's dead on. Um, <clears throat> it's a it's a nice looking sight. 
it's kind of like the black gold um, ascent verdict I believe is what it's called and I looked at those two um, nothing against them it's just elite being with them again just partnering up with them so I can talk about that so this bow sight um, the three pin I believe is about 300 bucks maybe a little more don't quote me on that um, um, around the same price range as the black gold ascent with the dovetail and that was the one thing that sold me on it was the dovetail um, granted I've never shot with a dovetail so I've got it sucked in close uh, not that I think it's gonna break um, it's just it sticks out far enough for me just the way it sat out of the package um, maybe after hunting season I'll play around with it and uh, and see what happens but uh, the pins are not that bright which I love personally because I wear contacts and the pins being too bright, they always kind of blur together. I don't know if any of you guys have that problem, but they got this clear housing with some fiber optics in it. And uh, they don't get that bright. Even in, in direct sunlight, they're not that bright. And I uh, really love it. It, it. it just works for me. Um, it does come with a sight light in Washington State. You cannot use sight lights. So if a sight light is something you need, there you go. Um, and then with them being with CBE, um, they carry custom bow equipment, has what's called the Torx kit. And it is a um, seven and a half or 11 inch stabilizer. Um, I personally went with the B-Stinger, countervail, micro hex. Um, it gets windy up here. This is supposed to cut wind. Um, I got the 10 inch. I've got the six inch sitting at home. I just gotta get the uh, sidebar attachment. I'm gonna try that out someday and give you guys a little review on that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I really like it. It really does, you know, to me, I don't even really need a stabilizer. I was shooting it this morning before I recorded the video without the stabilizer on it. Um, but this thing actually really does work well. I haven't tried the CBE one, so I can't say nothing about it. It looks almost identical um, as the original Bee Stinger. Um, a little more sleeker. It doesn't have the big doinker on the end. <laughs> doinker. But uh, yeah, so the, the Bee Stinger Micro Hex, um, it works really good. Um, I got the uh, quick attach because of my bow case. So there you go, and it's off. Got this little little doodad you screw on there you screw the the adapter on there and you just slide it in if you can get that washer out of the way it's hard with one hand slide it in and just go ahead and tighten her down it's like a little crush washer almost and there you go stabilizer's on so <clears throat> yeah i uh so really that's this is sitting out at like 11 and a half inches because of i measured this off the riser it sits off the riser about an inch and a half um so like 11 inches or so. Um, but other than that, the um, I got this LTR. Um, it's adjustable. You got a little Allen key, and then on the bottom you got hash marks. And uh, you can adjust this and, and use this to kind of help tune your bow. It's mainly for fletching clearance. And um, the cool thing with this bow when you get it is it comes with a big Bible, basically. And... Uh, uh, it tells you everything about this bow and how to tune this bow. So uh, it comes from the factory for vein clearance. Um, personally to me, it was a little too close. I didn't like it. So I adjusted it just a little bit and it actually uh, helped out a lot. So, um, and, and you know, in, in, in there it explains uh, if you slide it out, what it does, if you slide it in, what it does uh, with cam lean and, and all that stuff. So. Um, I didn't bump it up that much and it really, really made things a lot nicer. Um, so you can really kind of self tune this bow even without a bow press. Um, so that's kind of nice. And, uh, but like I said, it's a compact, it's, it's got some weight to her, but I kind of like it cause, uh, definitely helps stabilize the shot, uh, a lot more. Um, I believe just bare bow is like 4.2 pounds or four pounds, something like that. Uh, then you factor on the sight and the stabilizer. Um, it's got, it's got some weight to it. Um, and I, and I don't mind that at all. Um, so yeah, so that's the bow I'm shooting this year. The elite, Let's see if I can flip this around and be cool. The elite ritual 30. Um, 
check it out. They have this one, the 30. It's 30 inch plus or minus axle to axle. And then they have the 33, which is a 33 inch axle to axle. And then the 35. Um, all in the same category as the Ritual. Um, this one shooting the slowest. I watched a video from a guy, I can't remember his name. He was um, comparing the 33 and the 30. And uh, he's sponsored with Elite. And, uh, and uh, the 30 actually shot faster at 70 pounds than the 33, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. Same arrow, same everything, same setup. 30, 30 inch draw, 70 pounds, that's what I shoot. And this came out shooting three feet per second faster than the 33 even though that's not what was stated for IBO rating. And I know IBO, that's not really what we need to go by. I shoot, it's almost a 500 grain arrow, Eastern Axis, five millimeter, uh, 100 grain broadhead. I make my own, or I do my own fletchings with a three degree right, uh, three degree right offset with a two degree helical. And I use uh, blazer vein wraps, or blazer wraps, and uh, uh, so, I'm coming in at like 488, 490. Um, I think that's heavy enough for pretty much anything I hunt. Bear, elk, and deer. Um, so yeah, um, it's also got this wood wood grain handle on it. This little inlay. It looks sweet. Um, they really did a good job on this bow. I mean, this is uh, their newest bow for this year. And uh, kind of keeping the Ritual series alive. And uh, they didn't try to make something different. They just took what they had and improved it. And that's what I really liked. Um, you know, uh, some bow manufacturers come out with three different bows a year. Um, and that's cool and all, and they look great. I mean, don't get me wrong. But uh, the one thing I really liked about Elite is they took their platform, their ritual platform, and they just tried to make it better. Um, so that was really cool. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm shooting this year, the Elite Ritual. and. Uh, I honestly, in my honest opinion, think you owe it to yourself to go to your local elite dealer. Uh, there's actually not that many in Washington State. Um, the closest one to me is in Enumclaw. But you owe it to go to yourself and take the shootability, man, I can't even talk, shootability challenge and, and try it out. Um, and, and you might just end up walking out of the store with one. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got. The other thing I want to talk about was releases. Uh, this year I am uh, left-handed, but I am shooting the uh, Spot Hog Wise, wise Guy. Um, for the last four years, I've shot nothing but Scott releases. They're a great release. I have nothing bad to say about them. But uh, I was having a problem with my trigger. I was anticipating my shot. Some will call it target panic, if you will. And uh, so I was looking for options. Mainly, the wife was having the same issue, too. So I decided to look for options to help us out. And I found these on Amazon for a pretty good deal and picked up two of them. And uh, man, this trigger is crisp. It is clean. I got nothing bad to say about it. And uh, I really like the fact that you can flip it out of your way and uh, you can do whatever you need to do. Um, um, this doesn't swivel like a Scott. Um, so that's kind of, the only downfall I would say to it but if you get it set just right before you draw back um, this guy works really good um, and that's about all I got um, that elite bow it is a <laughs> it's a fast shooting bow I really like it it's a uh, it's accurate it's pretty quiet um, and it just looks really really sleek with everything they did um, and then uh, Partnered up with that spot hog wise guy. Um, I used to shoot hand releases, and uh, uh, this has made me really enjoy shooting a wrist release again. Um, so, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, as always, if you got anything I want to try out and do a review on, just let me know. I'll get her done. Um, sorry, I've had gaps in videos, um, but with truck breaking down and work getting crazy. Um, you know, it's almost the end of summer here. It's almost into fall time. So construction is getting crazy because we're getting into the wet season. But uh, um, I'm going to continue to make videos uh, as far as going bear hunting and try to get those out as quick as I can. 
hopefully I can get something down and uh, it'll be a fun ride guys um, I'm excited for the season it's a um, you know it's August and it should be like 70 plus right now but we're not even in the 60s yet so uh, it's gonna be a good season uh, I'm excited to get out there and hear them bugling bulls and uh, hopefully the blacktail deer aren't shedding their velvet just quite yet uh, maybe they'll hold off a couple weeks so that'd be sweet but um, once they shed their velvet, they go pretty much nocturnal and it's, and that's when it becomes a real challenge to hunt these deer. Um, but other than that, you guys, uh, train hard, hunt harder, and, uh, let's, uh, let's enjoy this ride we got. Take care guys.